Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to import URDF, STEP, and STL files in Isaac Sim. So let's get started. First, we'll download the URDF. I'm going to use TurtleBot 3 as an example. Open your browser and search TurtleBot 3 GitHub. You'll see the first link from GitHub. Open it. Here you can find the whole package of TurtleBot 3, which contains the description, example, and other folders that we'll need. Before downloading, we need to select a proper branch according to our ROS version. I'm using ROS 2 Humble, so I'll select the Humble branch. This will give us the package suitable for ROS 2 Humble. Now, copy the repository HTTPS link, open the terminal, and type git clone followed by the copied link this will download the package into your home directory once it's done close the terminal and browser and open isaac sim here also i'm using the workstation installation wait until isaac sim is fully loaded now we'll start with adding the environment i'm going to add the default simple room environment Go to Create, Environment, then click Simple Room, or you can use the Isaac Sim assets as I showed in the last tutorial. But for simplicity, I using default Simple Room Environment. Once it's loaded, you'll see the environment here. We don't need this table in this scene, so let's deactivate it. In the stage panel, you can see table underscore low underscore 327 form. Right click on it and click Deactivate that will remove the table from the environment. Now we'll start importing the URDF. It's very simple. Go to File, then click Import. Go to the TurtleBot 3 folder that we downloaded earlier from GitHub. Open it, then open TurtleBot 3 underscore description URDF. Here you can see the URDF files for TurtleBot 3. There are different models. We'll use TurtleBot 3 underscore burger dot URDF. Do a single click on it. And on the right side, you can see the import configuration panel. The first option is model. Create and stage will import the full model directly into your scene. While reference model creates a lightweight reference that loads faster and keeps links to the original file. We'll select reference model. Next is links. Since we're using a mobile robot that will move around the environment, we'll select movable base. Static base is for fixed robots like robotic arms. We'll see that in later tutorials. Now an important point, joints and drives. There are two Revolut joints for the TurtleBot 3 wheels, and they are velocity controlled, not position controlled. So we'll change this from position to velocity. Next is collider type. Convex hull generates a simple, optimized collision shape while convex decomposition generates multiple smaller convex shapes for more accurate collisions but heavier performance. We'll select convex hull here. Now click import. It will create some supporting files in the same directory. Click yes. And here you can see our TurtleBot 3 URDF is successfully imported. In the stage panel, you can see its articulation tree, all its links joints, and looks are visible. Click on the main prim, and let's take the robot a little bit down to the floor. Now let's check whether this imported URDF is correct or not by moving the robot. In the stage panel, under TurtleBot 3, expand the joints folder. You can see two Revolut joints here. You can visualize them too. Click on the I button, show by type, Physics, then Joints. Now click on one of the joints. Here you can see that it's a Revolut joint moving along the z-axis. Currently, there's no upper or lower limit because the wheel can rotate infinitely. You can check the same for the other joint as well. Now, let's hide this visualization again and move further. Select this joint again. To move the robot, we need to define some velocity for the joint. 
In the Properties section, scroll down. Here you can define the revolution axis and the lower and upper limits in the Revolut Joint section. Scroll down a bit more. Under the Drive section, put Target Velocity as 100 and do the same for the other joint. Now play the simulation. You can see our turtle bot is moving. We can also control this robot with RS commands using Action Grass and the ROS Bridge, which we'll see in upcoming videos. So stay tuned, and please subscribe to the channel. Now let's add a LiDAR sensor to this turtle bot. Before that, make sure the turtle bot is selected in the stage panel. Then go to Create, Sensors, then PeachYX LiDAR. It's a 2D LiDAR along the X axis like the one usually used with TurtleBot. Select the rotating option. You can see the LiDAR added in the stage panel, but its position isn't correct. So let's fix that. You can move it manually with the translation arrows. Or directly enter the exact transform values in the property section. According to me, the best method is to move the LiDAR under its LiDAR prim. For TurtleBot 3, that's A underscore namespace underscore base underscore scan. Select the LiDAR and set all three transforms, X, Y, Z, to 0. Now play the simulation, but right now, you're not able to see whether the LiDAR is working or not. To check that, stop the simulation, select the LiDAR, and scroll down to the bottom of the Properties section. Click on Raw USD Properties, and tick Draw Lines and Draw Points. Now start the simulation again. And yes, you can see that the LiDAR is scanning properly. Let's save this setup now. This will create a .usd file that you can use in Isaac Lab for training or other purposes. I'll save it as turtlebot3.usd in this folder. I'll also add the link to this folder in the description so that you can verify it even if you made some mistakes during the process. Now you might have a question. How can we verify whether our LiDAR scan is correct or not? For that, we can use the built-in tool in Isaac Sim. It doesn't require ROS or any external tools. Go to Tools Robotics Occupancy Map. At the bottom, you'll see a new Occupancy Map panel. First, we'll define the boundary for this scan. Select the Simple Room Environment and click Bound Selection, then Center to Selection. Now you can see the grid, but its height is not correct. It's above our laser sensor. So, in the origin Z value, put minus 0 0.57. Now the grid is properly aligned with the sensor. Next, click on Calculate. You can see it performing the scan. Then click on Visualize Image, and you'll see the occupancy map. You can also download this image if you want. But since our environment is very simple, the map looks quite empty. So let's add some props into the environment. We'll import some step and STL files. You can download these from sites like GrabCAD or use your own CAD files. I already have some files ready that I'll import now. It's very straightforward. Go to File, then click Import. Go to the directory where your files are saved. The folder that I mentioned at the start contains these files. Select a step file and click import. It will automatically convert the CAD to USD format and create a supporting folder in the same directory. Here you can see the imported step file. Just rotate it by 90 degrees. Now play the simulation, but you'll notice everything is still floating in the air. As we already know, we need to add physics to it. I've shown two methods before, 
either from the stage panel or from the property panel. You can also right-click the object directly and go to Add, Physics, then Rigid Body with Collider Preset. Just make sure the correct object or prim is selected in the stage panel. Now start the simulation, and you can see it's resting properly on the ground. Next, we'll add an STL file. This is the same process. Go to File, then Import, select the STL file, and click Import. You can see the imported STL file. Just rotate it 180 degrees and place it properly. Similarly, you can add any step or STL files you need in Isaac Sim and assign the required physics to them. For our final scan, I've already created a complete environment that you can find in the same folder. At the bottom, go to the content browser, open that folder, and double-click tut5 underscore env.usd. It will load the full environment with our turtle bot. Now, let's quickly check the occupancy map again. Go to Tools, Robotics, and Occupancy Map, click Bound Selection, then Center to Selection, and align the grid. Click Calculate, and you can see the LiDAR scanning. Now click Visualize Image, and here you can see the correct occupancy map for this environment. There are other methods to import URDS as well, which we'll cover in upcoming tutorials. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video. And if you're confused about any part of the tutorial, please let me know in the comments. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, and thanks for watching.